Hi, I'm Brian with WV Gamers. Years before Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone to the world, most people who had a cell phone, which it was much rare at that time, were likely sporting a Nokia. Now, they come in different forms, one like this, and we'll get them with little antennas that pop out. Those were probably the most notable design. And there wasn't a whole lot that these things would do. They can make phone calls, they could send text messages, they had a few little applications on them, like a calendar here and there, but they also had some games on them. The most notable game that you typically, if you had a Nokia, you probably thought about when you think about Nokia is Snake. Super simple game. It's all about having a little dot going around the screen of your phone. You sit there and control it, and little pieces of food would spawn onto the screen. Your goal? Go and eat the food. But every time you ate the food, you grew one pixel in size. You would continue doing this, getting longer and longer and longer, until eventually you would hit a point where you've kind of trapped yourself, where you can't move anywhere without biting a part of your body, and you would game over, you would be shown your score, and you would play it again to try to beat your score. Snake was kind of like the Angry Birds of that generation, at least in terms of cell phones. So people would sit there and play it over and over, trying to beat their high score. There wasn't a whole lot of value to it, but, you know, it was a good way of killing a little time. Well, Nokia, while still around, does not make phones of this design really anymore. Because we have smartphones with bigger screens, nice colorful displays, and more than likely... Most people these days wouldn't really enjoy Snake. But that doesn't mean that there isn't something fun about Snake. But that it couldn't be revived in some way to be more enjoyable. And that's what David Newton, a game designer, thought as well. When he designed Caterpillar Filler. This basically takes the core concept of Snake and turns it into a board game that could be played with multiple players. Essentially, you all are taking on the roles of caterpillars who are just trying to eat enough to be able to grow into a beautiful butterfly. And so what you're going to try to eat mainly is flowers. But if you know anything about caterpillars, they're cannibals. They'll eat each other. They don't care. So that's another thing you could do. You can go and bite on another player. You can just chase them down. There's two ways to really play that. So let's take a look at what this game has to offer. So this is the game board and the components. So this is gonna be your caterpillar. There's gonna be uh, one color for your body and a different color for your head. You can mix and match the colors that are included in the box to be whatever type of caterpillar you want. You have other body parts over here. Your goal is to eat enough to clear off this section of, your, of the game board so then you can turn into a butterfly. These are the little uh, starting flowers that will show up in the beginning of the game. Now, if you're using a variant, this will not always be the layout, but by default, and even by the way the mat shows you, is this is where they, by default, in a normal game, will be at. You have little blue and orange tiles over here. On them are going to be a letter, this is an O, and a number, 13. Those line up with coordinates on the board. Whenever you need to spawn new flowers, whether you've eaten a flower or you've rolled a three on this die, which we'll talk more about, you'll need to flip those over and place a, 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 a flower onto the board. And then finally, there's your flower supply. You'll also have this little butterfly. This is basically just like the trophy, whoever wins. You get to hold that, take a picture, and post it online. You know, fun little thing like that. And then you have your all wooden die that has numbers ranging from three to five. Notable, three has a little flower on it, and that's important whenever uh, you're rolling and trying to move, and we'll talk more about that, but again, this will be a way you'll spawn more flowers. So, the game will either end when one player has collected all of their body parts and added it to their caterpillar, or when all of these tiles have been flipped up and a new flower needs to be spawned and there's no new tiles to flip. When that happens, basically whoever has the longest caterpillar will win the game. So, let's talk about how the game is played. So, gameplay is super, super simple. You have a die, you roll the die. 
You look at the number on the die, you move that many spaces. If you happen to end on a space with a flower or another caterpillar, you get lunch. And uh, we'll talk about what happens when you get to have some nice yummy lunch. Um, and then optionally, all players will have a little wasp token, which, will, which is basically the backside of a flower. So there's your little wasp. It doesn't want to focus. Well, it's there. And then the other side is going to be your flower. So all players will have one of these wasps. Before or after a movement, you may place this wasp down. What it does is basically blocks movement of any caterpillar through it. Think of it as basically a wall. It can be placed anywhere on the board that's empty except any of the outer edge spaces. Those are off limits for reasons we'll talk about here shortly. And once you've moved, you've potentially ate, optionally placed a wasp down, hand the die over to the next player, and that's basically how the turns are going to go until a victory condition is uh, had. So let's say you roll a three. Eh, I find three. You roll a three. Before you do any movements or anything like that, you're going to reveal two tiles, and you could be any of them. It doesn't have to be just from the top. You're going to take a flower, and you're going to place it where it shows. So this says O13. So I'm going to place this little flower on O13. Now, if there was something in O13, the player who rolled the die gets to choose where it's going to go. And it needs to be somewhere very close to it. So if I had something like this was here and the rest of the body, I still have to put it in one of the spaces that surround that. But basically, you have to go within reason close by. That's what happens when you roll a three. Now, once you finish spawning that, any number that you roll, you're going to get to move your caterpillar. Well, movements are pretty straightforward. You move the head where it wants to go. You take the tail. You move it in the place where the head was. So that was one, two, three. Simple as that. So it's pretty easy. It can be a little more challenging whenever you have like your caterpillar a little longer and it gets bunched up. A little hard to tell. remember where the tail was, but... Um, other than that, it's a little minor thing. Let's say you happen to be near a flower and you move into a flower space. Well, like I said, you consume it. First thing you do is you take that token, that flower token flips over to become a wasp token for your supply. Take one of your body from the reserve and add it behind where your tail is. And what you'll do is respawn a new flower at J2 in this case from the supply, find J2 over here and your movement must end no matter how many movements you had left now you can still toss down a wasp if you haven't this turn but that's essentially all you'll do now let's get these flowers out of the way pull this over here and say let's see what happens whenever you bite another caterpillar so in this case the blue caterpillar is going to move here bite this caterpillar this the red player is going to remove the, one of their body pieces and put it back over here into the supply and they're going to take all their pieces off the board now they're going to be forced to rejoin on their next turn and we'll talk about that here momentarily so uh, make sure your blue gets a new piece because he did eat and that's basically all that's going to happen for blue now come around to the red players next turn they're going to have to rejoin rejoining is pretty straightforward you're going to take all of your body pieces, including your head, and place them somewhere along the edge of the map. It doesn't matter where, but it just all has to be connected, and you have to be able to have it, uh, you know, in valid spaces where there's not another player or anything like that. Wasps can't be spawned anywhere on the outer edge, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, once you rejoin the map like this, you do not get to roll the die, but you still can place a wasp down. And... Uh, yeah, so the one other thing that could happen is sort of like in Snake, you could find yourself making an unfortunate decision that gets yourself trapped and you have no valid move. So like in this case, the head has nowhere valid to go. It can't bite itself. So it would be forced to rejoin the map as well. Now, unlike getting bit, when you uh, fall into this situation, you move all of your pieces off, but you do not lose a piece of your body. So... Uh, it's just you on your next turn, you basically don't get to move. So that's kind of the downfall to 
uh, rejoining whenever you've trapped yourself. And pretty much that's the game. Uh, I may have missed a little minor thing here and there, tend to do little, little things like that. I have done a full written review on all the rules, so if uh, you want to go check that out to see what I may have missed, I'll have a link for that down below. Now, this game also comes with some variant tiles, and the variant tiles are going to give you two different categories of new options for the game. Could be something like this, where, I don't know why it's off, okay. Uh, something like this, where it's going to have a new loadout for where the uh, flowers and potentially wasps will be spawned. And on the back, let's just adjust that. And on the back, there we go. Uh, new rules that you can in, uh, place into, into the game. So like this one says, Caterpillars cannot be moved onto spaces contain, containing opponents' caterpillars. Basically, if you want to play more of a pacifist game and you don't want to be attacking other caterpillars, you might decide to use this rule. Could be good for kids. Now that I've got that in focus, let's show you what the alternate setup looks like. There you go. So I'll show you where the new flowers and the wasps will be spawned. Another uh, variant option is, uh, let's see, caterpillars cannot move onto the outside edge. So uh, any of the outside edge, you can only move on to it when you initially join the map or at the beginning of the game. Uh, other than that, you cannot touch the edge. So that is that. And there's other rules as well. But that's essentially everything there is to Caterpillar Filler. I like this game. I love the idea that they took an old game from a Nokia phone of all things and made it into something fun, cute, and fresh. Now, is this going to be everybody's go-to game? No, but this is a great game for children or people who simply like lighter games that has some degree of strategy to it, but at the end of the day, it's just kind of a little bit of a race to see who rolls better, who thinks about trapping their opponents better, and, you know, utilizing these wasps strategically. And, uh, yeah, it's super cute. Now this is a prototype, I should have said that at the beginning. So everything here could change between now and when the Kickstarter uh, is fulfilled. And we'll talk about that momentarily. But one thing I really wanna point out is just how nice of a prototype it really is. So I've had prototypes that are just, you know, cardstock with some basic stuff on them. Uh, not a whole lot of art in some cases, but this, it honestly, I would not be disappointed to buy this as the final game. I mean, the box art is beautiful. I love, love this. This has a lot of shelf presence. This would be great in game stores or even on your own shelf. You will just put that right back here with the hobby games because hobby games are cute games as well. Um, the components are of nice quality. Um, they are laser cut. These ones are laser cut. I doubt the final version will be. Um, and that's kind of partly good because it doesn't have the block coming off on it, but uh, each of the components are nice. I love that it comes with a play mat. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's nice that it's just not cardboard. It's just, it's nice. The only thing I hope is there will be a stretch goal that will make this a stitched mat, so then there's no risk of it fraying over time. Um, but yeah, quality, quality prototype. I'm super, super happy with it. The, the rules, super compact um but yeah uh it's a fun game i think a lot of people can really enjoy this game i'm certainly going to enjoy it i'm going to show it off at our game shop uh whenever i have the right crowd of people coming and uh yeah it's super fun um this game is going to kickstarter later this month uh i'll whenever i have the final link i will include that in the description below uh and on my on the website for wv gamers um, but yeah, I encourage you, if you like the look of this, or even are just curious on what else this game's going to unlock throughout the campaign via stretch goals, go and follow them. Um, because, I mean, we need more cute games like this that, um, you know, it's a lot of fun and a lot of people, a lot of kids and a lot of families can just enjoy this together. So, um, I encourage you to go check it out if it seems like something you or your family and friends would enjoy. So, 
I'm Ryan with WV Gamers. This has been Caterpillar Filler. See you next time.